so I'm going to start this video by saying it is 12.30 a.m. on Wednesday, September 9th. I had no plans to make a video at 12.30 at night on a weeknight because I'm an adult with a job. <laughs> but I took a nap earlier uh, on Tuesday night and I woke up to multiple people in my inbox going, have you seen Kate's story today? If you're new here, Kate Leth. And I was like, no, but the, the sheer number of you probably means I'm going to need to talk about this. Um, and then, and I was mad about it. I was like, this is some, some country fed bullshit, but... But then someone also sent me her Patreon statement, which is behind a paywall, which I did not ask for and honestly feel like my life would have been better not having read that Patreon uh, update. But it has basically come to my attention that she has to be dealt with and silence has saved her for a decade. Um, and we're not doing that anymore. And again, I also want to say I am not here as an employee of Buffering. I'm here as the woman that Kate has just chosen to be racist towards, to do harm to, and to try to discard, discredit, and ignore. Uh, so some people are also like, why do you keep saying things? Like, even my mom is kind of like, you should just, like, let it go. Like, if you're trying to do other consulting gigs, you know, it could look bad. But uh, there's two things that I learned. Uh, one, ACT UP taught me silence equals death. Um, and when I got older, I read Zora Neale Hurston, who says, if you are silent about your pain, they kill you and say you enjoyed it. Kay doesn't deserve silence. So she's not getting it. So uh, this time I actually made a whole entire list. So this could be a minute, but I'm going to address every bullshit racist avoiding responsibility tactic that she's employed. So this is from her Patreon. Her words. Things have gotten really ugly on the internet. I don't know how to re-engage with social media right now. I've been accused of so many things that repulse me, that make me want to scream, but instead I retreat and reflect and go just a little bit mad, wishing I could say what's really happened and really going on. Girl, you did something racist to me. I requested an apology, you wouldn't apologize. People brought forth receipts using your own words, uh, showing that you were racist, and you got in a huff and used every single excuse that there is to avoid taking responsibility. You did a lot of I'm sorry but, which is not an apology. Uh, so there is nothing for you to say what really happened. We all watched what really happened. There's like 70 pages worth of what really happened. You see, you might dirty delete, but other people don't. So that's an interesting excuse. Uh, then there's, I take it and I take it and I take it, people picking on her. Because the alternative is to fuel the fire and cause even more speculation and rage or accidentally cause people to dogpile on someone with less power than me. I'm, for lack of a better word, in an impossible situation. Dogpile on someone with less power than you. Ma'am, you don't know me. And see, that's the thing is, you assume that everyone has less power than you. Right? Because the victims that you have chosen as the predatory person you are historically haven't had as much power. They've been young, they've been black, they've been closeted or newly out. You have picked victims who, if they said something, could lose it all. You assumed, seeing my black face that you had never come in contact with, that I had no power. Which is your racism showing? And also a gross underestimation of who I am. And you're fake worried that someone's going to dogpile 
your blue check buddies came for me. They each try it once, learned their lesson, and walked away. I survived Gamergate complete with doxing threats, and I was only mildly attached to that. So no one's dogpiling here, and the, the hilarious implication that you're doing something to protect me or other people calling you out is patronizing, condescending, and pathetic. Three. This is this is one of my favorite ones. Anytime I apologize for anything, the immediate response is that it's fake. Half-assed, too late, it'll just dredge everything up again. Frankly, my mental health can't take it. It won't fix anything, and what I've said, I've meant. It'll just make it worse. Which it wouldn't if I didn't care, but I do way, way too much. You ever look at Taylor Swift getting upset on social media and think, why does she care? First of all, stop using your mental health as an excuse fuck that. There are millions of people in this world who have mental health issues. There's tons of famous people with mental health issues who don't say what you say. Don't do what you do. Your mental health is not an excuse to be racist. It's not an excuse to not apologize when you're racist. It is not a shield against your bad behavior and it is insulting to every single person with a mental illness that you are linking mental illness with racism and running from it. How dare you? And like, frankly, your apologies are half-assed. Like, I know, personally, people who messaged you with my situation going, yo, you need to apologize and here's exactly how. Like, I teach small children. And on Yom Kippur, you know what we do? We take the three to five-year-olds and we discuss with them what an apology means, what the steps are, why we do it. If I can teach preschool age kids, I'm pretty sure you can use the internet or listen to your friends and figure out how to properly apologize. But like conflating your bad apologies with your mental health, like, ma'am, for. I don't even like talking about it here because what if someone screenshots me and it adds to the bad faith collection of evidence that I'm secretly a horrible person? I wish people knew at people at large knew the downside to having an audience. Everyone is always trying to catch you, waiting for the moment that mask slips and they see you were a monster all along. There are several things in that paragraph. You don't like talking about it here, and yet you are. Uh, you're worried that someone's going to screenshot you? Yes, everyone screenshots you because you dirty delete. You delete any evidence that you ever did anything wrong all the time. You can't be trusted to be accountable. So people screenshot you. If you weren't a fuck up, people wouldn't screenshot you. Um, a bad faith collection of evidence. So that's called gaslighting. It's not bad faith. Uh, there is a whole 70 page document actually uh, that exists that goes, here are Kate's words. Here's why those things are textbook racist. Uh, here's Kate's non-apology. Here's a personal account of the way Kate was racist towards someone, or humiliated someone, or bullied someone. Those are not bad faith arguments, but to tell people who have suffered your racism and your bullying that it's bad faith, it's gaslighting. A classic sign of abuse. You will not gaslight me. You will not gaslight anyone else because now that one person said something, everyone's going to say something. You don't get to gaslight people anymore. You just don't. And then the most interesting thing is this idea that people are always watching and waiting for you to fall. Girl, you fall all by yourself. Ain't nobody watching or waiting. You just do it all willy-nilly. And also, the, and also, frankly, and this is going to make a lot of people mad, you are a monster. But here's the thing. I believe firmly that monsters are not born. They are made. You were made a monster by 10 years of no consequence. People knew what you were doing. Publishers, illustrators, people who put you in anthologies, people knew and they they wanted the queer girl now person gender has changed over time 
they wanted the queer person. They, they wanted the, the points for that. They wanted to be inclusive. So there were no consequences. So you became a monster. You are above reproach in your own mind. You are above apologizing. You can gaslight and use and consume other people. You are a monster that was created by the community. Sucks to suck now, doesn't it? Five. All I want to do is draw my stupid little love stories. It's just that when I work on a comment for three hours and post it just so people can fill the comments with accusations and hate based off extremely biased statements they read on Twitter, it feels pointless. Not a single fucking comment is biased that people are reading. Literally, people have citations on your bad behavior. Again, gaslighting. You're taking away from the people. You're downgrading and denigrating the people who are saying, nope, you fucked up. You are racist. You are abusive. You are a bully. By saying, you know, they're reading biased statements. It's hard to be biased when it's the same story over and over. Brown and black people over and over mistreated in the same way. That's not biased. That's the truth. And to quote my fave, Lizzo, truth hurts. Six, if I turn off the comments, that's even worse. I can't see the adorable couples tagging their partners or the likes, the little smiles. I just see anger. And it feels like the entire world wishes I'd just shut up and go away. Did you know I've lost 300 patrons and close to a third of my Patreon income in the last month? People think social media has no real repercussions. But it does. You think seeing really cute, adorable couples outweighs the deep and justified anger of the community that you are going la di da di da di da when you have shoved people out of the comic community or you've been a public racist in the community? That is just a disturbing little combo of words. And it feels like the entire world wants you to shut up and go away. I can't speak for the entire world, but yes, you've had a decade, a decade to learn something, to be better, and you haven't. So honestly, you need to go away and stop talking for a while. And not when you're cute little, I messed up, I'm going to disappear, don't people forget and come back. Like, take a two-year sabbatical where you don't say anything. You read some books, you talk to some people who aren't your friends, who aren't going to coddle your feelings. And you learn something. I really think you just need to step away. And as for you losing 300 patrons and a third of your income, that's called consequences, honey. And I know you've never experienced them in the last 10 years, but when you do something, when you take action, there's a reaction and people are reacting with their dollars. That means people are looking at the evidence presented and going, yeah, that's not someone I want to support. So maybe think about that. Think about that a third of the people who are supporting you decided that you have misbehaved so badly that you don't deserve their money anymore. Then you said, if you're here at this point, I have to believe you're either not on social media and have no idea what I'm talking about, you're plugged in and yet you're open to considering the difference between valid criticism and dogpiling, or you're on the fence. Well, first of all, um, <clears throat> some people are not there for any of those reasons. Uh, some people are just there because they know you're trash and that you'll only say things behind a paywall and they want to make sure that your venom and lies uh get made public because you thrive on bullying and being mean in private. Just putting that out there. But also plugged in and yet open to considering the difference between valid criticism and dogpiling. Actually, no one is dogpiling you. In fact, if you go through the Twitter thread, no one's actually like directing anything towards you. Everyone has noted that you're a lost cause and they're talking amongst themselves. They're passing around the information going, here are the receipts. Do you really want to be involved with this person? Me personally, I'm going, here's my story and why I think you should not work with this person. That's not dogpiling. 
you are censoring yourself and victimizing yourself when no such thing is happening. You're suffering consequences, but you are not, in fact, being dogpiled. Eight, this is my, one of my favorites. To all of you, I say, I've been making comics for decades. I spent most of my career fighting for inclusion, for LGBTQ rep, for acceptance and celebration of queer and marginalized identities. I loudly argue for bi, pan acceptance and inclusion for non-binary rep, for supporting Black Lives Matter and donating to trans orgs. I've lost jobs and opportunities over it. Whatever happened to X comic? Well, more often than not, the publishers were transphobes or homophobes. But I can't say that publicly, so I'm stuck protecting people that consider me an unperson. You know, it's really convenient that all the time you've been protecting and standing up for Black people, you just can't talk about. And it's really even more interesting that that's just come up as you've been directly called out for the first time. That feels a little sus. And also, again, like you're perpetually hiding behind like, I speak for queer folks. Great. Being queer doesn't make you not racist. Like, Ed Buck was a whole entire gay man who was also a serial killer killing black dudes in West Hollywood. Being queer. Zero to do with not being racist. Hiding behind that? Not cute. Nine. And this one. Uh, a direct quote is, I empathize. Breonna Taylor's killers still walk free. Fuck you. Keep Breonna Taylor's name out your mouth. How dare you? With your long and storied history of racism, of referring to Idris Elba as an animal, your spirit animal wanting to own him, of the way you treated me as a black woman, don't you dare speak about Breonna Taylor. Like, that's the thing that honestly made me say I have to make a video, because that sent my blood pressure through the roof, you monster. You're a racist. Don't you dare bring her name into this to try to deflect from your bad behavior. How dare you? Ten. <laughs> but somewhere, at some point, I have to draw the line between making things right and thanking the shoe for kicking me while I'm down. You're not down. You have never suffered a consequence. You've gotten to make almost all of your comics. No problem. I mean, there was that crunchy roll disaster, but like that was just because it was bad. <laughs> that wasn't a consequence of your behavior. You're not suffering. Stop trying to make yourself a victim here. You aren't suffering except for consequences. And I know that feels awful when you've never experienced them, but literally no one is kicking you while you're down they're calling you in and they're calling you out and you deserve that stop playing victim 11 which is this is also pretty funny i'm a queer non-binary woman who struggles deeply with mental health i've been out for 20 years on the internet just as long lying low and learning for a while is fine but i'm not going to disappear again reminding us for the umpteenth time you're a queer you have mental health issues. Those don't absolve you of racism. Note the number of times in your Patreon statement that I've had to remind you that your queerness and your mental health are not shields for these things. Like, that is a common thread that you keep using to deflect. No. <laughs> and then 12, at the bottom of this Patreon statement, which again, she says all of this behind a paywall. <laughs> She just throws in every POC and queer thing possible to deflect. She's like, here's all the things I wanted to talk about the last couple weeks, but I couldn't. Watch Disclosure, which came out months ago. My woman of color friend, see, see, I have a woman of color friend. She's got a Kickstarter. And then she goes through a bunch of other people. And at the very bottom, she goes, and Megan Stallion's like, Megan the Stallion is like killing it on Instagram. Again, using black women, women of color to deflect from her own racism. No. Like, it's a pattern that you can see between what happened with me and this Patreon letter. She's always deflecting, always centering and victimizing. And guys, that was just the Patreon. The screenshots. Now, the screenshots are a whole other party. So, first things first. She uses mental health as a shield yet again. Uh, so I'm not even going to, like, give that dignity of an answer, <laughs> because 
Christ, it's bad. Um, but again, mental health is not a shield. Um, her whole thing here is like her mental health just like can't handle it. Well, honey, people with mental health issues who know that they have limitations, they generally try to mitigate harm. So I have friends who have other people, you know, look at their tweets before they send them. Because here's the thing. You know you have a history of saying the absolute worst thing at all times. You know that, like, it affects your mental health deeply. So you have somebody check your tweets first. Or, like Pete Davidson, who knows that social media is not good for him, he stays off social media. You could try it. He only comes back when he's got to talk about a new movie. You could try that. Your mental health can't take it. Cool. Don't be on until you need to use it to advertise something new. Instead of using it as a reason to be racist and not have to face consequences. You talk about blanket statements. Um, about people. I'm actually going to go back to Instagram because I think the actual code is actually pretty funny. Hold on. Because someone, you know, sent me the screenshots because you can't behave yourself. Here we go. Or not. Here we go. Um, so, yeah. So you talk about your mental health. And then you talk about you're absolutely not interested in perpetuating or engaging in a discourse uh, about whether you're good or bad. Um, you're neither. But you think things have been blown out of proportion. I asked for restorative justice. An apology. A thorough apology. You couldn't do that. So I took my platform and said, hey, this person is, is out of right relations. And people contacted you that you know and said, hey, here's how you fix the problem. You chose not to. Now, people that you have hurt, that you've abused, now they st stepped forward and said, hey, here are the receipts. She's been doing this for a long time. And all you've done is deflect and lie and deny. So nothing's been blown out of proportion. Again, you're just unaccustomed to consequences, which I think is fascinating. <laughs> and then you say you encourage to think people to think a little more critically about blanket statements. I have yet to see a blanket statement. Again, I've seen very specific call-outs and critiques of your racist behavior. I didn't make any blanket statements. I was very clear and honest about exactly what you did, the exact harm that it caused. No one's making blanket statements. Again, you're facing consequences you don't like, so you're throwing every word you can think of at it except for an apology. Um, how is you giving me a public apology in any way, like, blowing things out of proportion? Like, that's all I wanted, was a public apology. Like, <laughs> I, I don't get it. I mean, also, you're using the social media made me do it uh, card, which is, like, pathetic. <laughs> you said, the thing is, social media has been poisoning my brain for years, and it took leaving entirely for me to realize just how much. It made me so angry, so cynical, so ready to criticize. Again... Pete Davidson figured out that social media was toxic, and he left. You, across 10 years, have gone off the internet multiple times to run from consequences. Like, <laughs> you can't blame social media for making you a bad person. You've gone off, you've come back on. You've gone off, you come back on. So that is refutable and bullshit. Sorry about it. Not valid. Um, you, you said that you don't want to encourage, you know, infighting. Which, again, like, man. Or, like, a public feud. There is no infighting. There's, like, no infighting. People are literally going, huh, here's all this terrible stuff she's done. I'm going to unfollow. That's not infighting. You're the only one. Who's like upset you and your blue check buddies everyone else is simply stating fact and sharing their feelings that's not infighting it's not even a public feud which is also the other thing that you called it which i find very very amusing um let's see 
and no one's trying to exile you. I mean, I'm kind, I kind of wish you would go away, but, like, honey, you're not going to be exiled. You're white. They're going to let you come back no matter what. Um, you keep blaming on mistakes, inexperience, and miscommunication. Again, over 10 years, there is no mistakes. Not miscommunication. Not inexperience anymore. We're the same age. Like, we're whole entire adults. There's absolutely no mistake in experience miscommunication. No. That's not an excuse. Also, you've had 10 years of people giving you, like, really specific directions on how to fix these problems, and you refuse. You refuse. Like, that's all you got to do is take what people are telling you. Actually, since you're claiming you did all that work with Buffy the Vampire, or with the Buffering cast, have you taken a look at our Just Keep Fighting page? Because there's a lot of information there. Uh, there's also, oh, you said, you know, you your back hurts from think, being thrown under the bus. Bitch, you were not thrown under the bus. That is not how that happened. You did wrong. You were called out. All your dirty secrets were brought out to light that you've been actively hiding. Not thrown under the bus. No. Uh, you're not leaving one in the lurch, anyone in the lurch, like you said. Like, you're sorry, I'm leaving the lurch. You're running scared because this time there are consequences. You lost 5,000 followers and a third of your Patreon income. You're running away. And here's my thing. You did all of this and said all of this, either behind a paywall or where I, the person that you're mostly referencing, uh, couldn't see it because you thrive on silence. You play vague in all of this and won't name the harm. Like, all of this is really vague for all your followers who aren't on social media or aren't in the middle of it because you can't handle what happens when you directly address things. It's atrocious. Your behavior is atrocious. You coming at me and other people and calling us essentially liars and gaslighting us? That's slander at this point. Saying I've blown things out of proportion. Implying that I'm lying. That I'm throwing you under the bus. Kate, grow up. All you had to do was apologize. You brought this on yourself. And I've said it before. Stop. And I don't mean just go away and, and come back later. Don't talk about it. Unless you're going to publicly apologize to all of your followers. Instagram, Twitter, apologize to me the right way. Which I'm not going to explain to you because you're an adult who has worked in queer spaces and spaces with people of color. So I, you should definitely know how to apologize at this point. Until you apologize to me publicly, don't talk about me. Don't talk about what's going on. Just go away until you're ready to accept that you're racist and work on it and apologize properly. Like, it's 1 a.m. and my mom's like, why are you being loud <laughs> on the internet? Because I have to deal with you. Like, the amount of emotional labor that I have to put into you to make sure my name doesn't get dragged and slandered because you are using white lady tears, which is what this is, to get people to feel bad for you? Kate, go straight to hell and stay off the internet until you, like, can appropriately behave. 